Ritual Rampage. Alright, game three against tier limits. Oh man, things are sketchy. Oh, I don't know if we're gonna make it, guys. I don't know if we're gonna make it. Oh boy, oh boy, oh wow, he's out. I mean, yeah, we got combos, but we're against meta, so what are we supposed to do, you know? And plus, since this is game three, they already know our strategy. So, so, we're screwed, right? We're screwed, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's nothing we can do. We, we might as well scoop. And, and then, oh, 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 there's the first one. There's the first two limits. Oh, oh boy. Oh, hot dog. Oh, oh. <laughs> it's because they knew. It's because they knew. Meta. All right, next one. Uh, I don't even remember. I'm gonna have to bring editing Dodo from the future over here. Damn it! Oh uh, yeah, this one's actually up against the mirror match. It's uh, it's pretty interesting. And uh, and just saying, these duels are not ordered by any specific way. I think it's just like alphabetized. Yeah, I think it's alphabetized by uh, the name of whatever I named each replay. Ah, yeah. Uh, by this point, I started experimenting with Medea's Servant and uh, Dogmatica Maximus. I was already playing the deal with White Relic, but I got the idea to use Maximus from St. Marcus after he invited me on his stream. <laughs> Feels Guys, good. Feels good, look at my BPS yeah. rod. Yo, what the hell? <laughs> look at my BPS huh? rod. I don't know how to feel about Maximus. That draw effect, I know it's a good thing, but for me personally, I always draw one of the imps and it just stumps the combo, so like... I don't know, I might go back to White Relic or something, I'm not sure. I'm gonna keep testing it out, but it's it keeps messing me up, I don't know why. Since we're just doing the basic Dodo combo, patent pending, uh, I'm just gonna fast forward for a bit, uh, you get the gist. Although if you don't get the gist, I recommend watching my other video where I show you guys exactly how to use the Ritual combo. The card list shown there isn't exactly up to date, but it's enough to get you started. And a lot of the tech shown there still works really well. Anyway, Magician of Chaos, gotta take yourself out, man. Trust no one. Not even yourself. So we bring out Magician of Black Chaos. Uh, Tribute, Rod, stump all their monster effects. Their turn, they try to bring out Apprentice, they whip on effect though. Uh, stack Mahad? Draw, his effect does not go off and they can see. Okay, this game was not supposed to be next, but I realized there's over two hours of footage, and I don't think it'd be worth making one video that long. At least not yet. So I'm just going to show duels that let me show off some interesting techniques that you guys could probably learn from. Plus, I can always make more virtual rampage videos if there's enough interest. So if you like it, be sure to like, comment, subscribe so I know to make more. Okay, since this is a Ritual Dark Condition video and not an Infinite Tracks video, I'm gonna fast forward until it's dark. Sorry, Infinite Track guy, gotta do it for you. Oh, okay. Menu's a goblin, 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 menu's a goblin. Alright, so it's finally our turn and they use rivalry. Okay, uh, this card does a lot more than what the text says. It's not that we just can't have one monster tap on the field, it's that we can't even attempt to try to bring out a second one, even if it replaces the first one in the process. So, for example, let's say we have Rod on board and Tamias in hand. We can't even try to bring out Tamias tributing the Rod with its effect. Tamias would be stuck on our hand. And since the ritual strategy uses a bunch of different types of monsters, that's out of the play for right now. So we're gonna do an alternative route to try to go into a fusion instead. Since Tamias is a dragon on board and the limitations mentioned earlier, we could only go into a dragon, so no dragoon for right now. So I feel our best play right now is to go into Dragon Knight, since he's pretty much our only option. And that also adds front row protection and you know, back row protection, and we get to add him in rotation to bring him back whenever we need him if he goes away. And what we're doing now is setting up for our next turn to get rid of that rivalry, so it could open up our plays and we could start going ham. Whenever I get the Dragonite set up, I typically like to activate each soul right away as soon as I can because sometimes they have cards that they could set up where I cannot respond to them and I can't flip over each soul, leaving Dragonite vulnerable and we lose a little soft lock. They keep building onto their board and nothing too scary yet, but we know something big's coming. That's literally what the whole deck is about. So the current plan, other than survive, is Dragonite will get knocked out. Like, 
their whole point is making big monsters that hit hard. But we're actually counting on that, because getting rid of Dragonite leaves us open to bring up spellcasters again. So the whole reason we made Dragonite is just to try to protect Esol and, you know, to take some damage for us, because if they do have like a big monster that hits multiple times, then we'll just bring back Dragonite again to get knocked out, and once again, that'll leave us open for spellcasters, if we survive that thing. They try to target Dragonite for some reason, and uh, about here is when they're about to finish up building the board. So we start clenching our teeth, getting ready, because we know that battle phase is coming. And there goes Dragonite. We try to use E-Souls to either bring back Dragonite or force the Therion guy to use his effect and get off the board so we take less damage. Either way is win-win. And uh, right about there, yep, uh, we lose E-Soul. Yeah, that really sucks. So they're about closing up and it's just about our turn. And now that we survived, we could actually do our plan that we set up for on the first turn and go for an OTK this turn. First things first, we're gonna get rid of that rivalry. So we go ahead and grab that circle, stacking it to draw into it. And then we were going to summon Rod to get secrets, but since Circle gave it to us, we're just going to go into Chaos form instead. Then we use Illusion of Chaos to give us souls, and I think you guys know what we're going with this. We use souls, bring out Classic DM, and that gets rid of Rivalry, which means there's nothing holding us back now. And we're going to do a little something that's a little bit different from the usual combo. And ooh woo! Notice a zero defense submissive and breedable monster? That makes this play a whole lot better. Because, you see guys, as of right now, there's two Chaos Max monsters, and in this build, we're using both. So fanboys and non-existent fangirls, get ready. We're summoning Blue Eyes Chaos Max Dragon. And there's the game. In this game, we open up one of the Imps, which we don't want to draw, but the rest of our hand actually makes it work. First we use Salvation to set e -Soul. then we use Candle to do in Chaos Form and searching for Chaos Max. Souls hits the field, sending DMG to the grave. Since we have Prep in hand, we're sending Chaos Form to the grave to draw with Souls. We then activate Prep, searching for Mach and getting us back to Chaos Form we just discarded. We use Chaos Form and Mach hits the board. We could use Salvation to bring back Girl, but we choose not to for two reasons. 1. We're at 4 summons and we're playing around a viewer. 2. Leaving Dark Magician Girl in the grave allows Salvation to trigger on the opponent's turn when Magician of Chaos comes back with Easel, triggering his effect and letting us pop a card in the field. We wouldn't be able to do this if we bring her back now. But none of that matters since they use a Beast Steel and they're going to search for another and then banish Dark Magician Girl before we get a chance to bring her out. Though it's still worth pointing out. I mean, still learn something, right? And here you're probably wondering why I set Soul Servant instead of use it to extend the combo further. The reason for this is, we're going to use it to trigger Magician of Chaos. And you're probably thinking, but Dodo you sack of shit! You already set E-Soul! Why do you need Soul Servant to trigger Chaos? And to that I say, FUCK YOU! But also, if we use E-Soul to trigger Chaos, the opponent could chain to it and negate Magician of Chaos' effect. Eternal Soul may make him ineffective, but that's only after the chain is over. If they intercept the chain, Magician of Chaos is not protected. So that's where Soul Servant comes in. If we use that first and the opponent tries to negate Magician of Chaos, we could then chain Esol. The chain resolves backwards, meaning Esol protects Magician of Chaos and our combo ends up going through after all. So there's the search and they banish Dark Magician Girl. Not a big surprise! Now it's their turn and we use Soul Servant to trigger Magician of Chaos. They don't chain, so he pops himself and we try to bring out Chaos Max. They try to banish and negate Mach, but we're all no. Nope. So Magician of Chaos comes back and it brings Chaos Max with it. We attribute to Candle and they're locked off of monster effects. The opponent brings out the frogs and goes into Cat Shark, then go into Battle Phase taking out our Magician of Chaos. They then attack with Cat Shark to meet the requirements to go into Zeus. Zeus hits the field but we're not too worried. We stacked Illusion of Chaos earlier with Soul Servant exactly for a situation like this. We successfully bait Zeus's effect with Esol, then banish Soul Servant to draw into another IOC. We use its effect to go into Rod. An offensive play is available to us here, but we're going to be defensive. Going for another Esol since Zeus doesn't have enough materials to use its effect again. Here, I should have gone into Artemis, but I forgot to. Don't be like me guys. Don't forget to bring out Artemis. Don't take it for granted. Back in the day, all us Dark Magician players had was the Liberty Trilly duo, and they suck ass. So just don't take Artemis for granted guys, please. With another Esol set, Magician of Chaos in the grave, and an opponent low in resources, we've got a recipe for victory here. We just gotta play our cards right. We bring back Magician of Chaos before the opponent even gets the chance to use any normal spells. So now, all we gotta do is wait and pop whatever's the biggest threat on the board when we get the chance. 
The opponent continues building onto their board. They bring out a big body, but it's nothing we can't handle. And with Sprite Jet in the opponent's hand, we know they're going to search for a spell. Exactly what we need them to do. So now we just wait for them to activate it. They go into Dark and activate a spell. We chain and destroy Gigantic Sprite. They lose Esol, but it's not a big deal. Gigantic Sprite limited the opponent to only summoning level and link 2 monsters, so Dark can't steal Magician of Chaos. It's safe in our graveyard. It's now our turn, though the opponent continues with their plays. We have everything we need to set up for our loop again. We're going to use Illusion of Chaos's effect to search out another Magician's Rod. So the plan now is to get out another E-Soul and continue whittling down the opponent's resources. This gives us time to make our next big move. We go into the battle phase and attack Sprite Crew. Since they still have Dark on the field and won't be limited to only special summoning level 2s this time, we're going to bring back Magician of Chaos right away. This will also trigger the Magician's Rod in our grave to tribute the one on the field to return itself to our hand. The opponent steals the rod in our grave. They use a search spell, but we choose not to chain with chaos yet. Instead, we wait for them to activate the spell they just searched and destroy it, preventing the other search effect. They summon Sprite Jet and go into a gigantic Sprite Jet. Sprite Blue hits the board and searches for another Sprite Jet. They summon it to search for Sprite Starter. They go into IP Masquerina and enter the battle phase. Gigantic attacks Chaos and we tank the other two hits. It's now our turn and we have what we need to start going for bigger plays. We summon Rod to search for Magician Circle. We activate it and whip on the search. Eternal Soul brings back Magician of Chaos, triggering Circle. They chain with IP to bring out Goddess to the closed world, almost wiping our entire board. But we still have Magician Souls in our hand. We send Vanilla DM to Grave and Special Summon Magician of Chaos again. We activate Illusion of Chaos to search for Timaeus the United Dragon. Timmy hits the board and we fuse it with Magician of Chaos to make Dark Magician the Dragon Knight. Dragonite attacks into Goddess and they chain with Sprite Starter. They special summon Sprite Red and I completely misread its effect so I stupidly attack into it instead of Goddess. The opponent uses a Beastial effect. We chain with Esol but it gets negated by Goddess. Magician of Chaos is banished and Magna hits the field. They go into battle phase and trade with Dragonite. We then tank another direct attack. During the end phase, they search for another beast deal. It's our turn, and we draw into the Illusion of Chaos we stacked in our last turn. We use this effect to search for Magician Souls. We activate it before E-Soul, just in case if the opponent tries to banish Dragonite. Dragonite successfully returns to the field. Circle banishes Magna, and Dragonite goes for a direct attack. Druid Swarm banishes the Timmy in our grave to defend against the Dragonite. Druid Swarm attempts to send Dragonite to the grave, but fails. Eternal Soul brings back Classic Dark Magician, and the opponent concedes.